Hi everyone, it's Lauren and these are all the books that I read in the first half of August. I've had a great couple of weeks reading wise. I've read a couple of books um, this month so far that I think are going to be on my top reads of 2016 at the end of the year because I just loved them so much. And the first one of those is The Tidal Zone by Sarah Moss. This was sent to me by Faber and I just Loved it. This is told from the perspective of a father who gets a phone call that his daughter Miriam has just collapsed and stopped breathing at school and they've called an ambulance and she's okay now but she, for a while she wasn't breathing and this is a singular event that happens in this family's life and it's about them coping with that event, coping with the idea of grief but not actually having to face grief and it's just such a beautiful book on how normality blends in with dealing with these crazy tragic events and how the family then go to the hospital and the doctors try and work out what happened to her and, and why she had this kind of incident and the way this is written is that it's interspersed with what's going on with the family but also the dad Adam is writing a history on Coventry Cathedral and the bombing that happened to Coventry in the war which um, destroyed the cathedral and then it had to be rebuilt and it's just so wonderful for him using these images of people dealing with pain and dealing with the onset of disaster like when their houses were being bombed in the war and the kind of normality of it as well and I just think this is so skillfully written and also just really hits you emotionally like he says at one point um, as a parent you always worry that your child might be involved in an accident like your child might get hit in the face with a hockey stick they might walk out into the road and be run over by a car and you're kind of always worried you might get that phone call but what you're not ever worried about is that their heart will just stop or they will just stop living and their body will shut down because he's saying how can you ever prepare you can't live your life worried that someone might just stop breathing one day and it's just really um, insightful I think in terms of families and love and kind of dealing with these tragic events and that when they happen you have to get on with life and kind of learn to enjoy life again but you also can't live your life worrying that something might happen. And um, another example that I really liked when he is talking about um, the bombing of Coventry are these examples of people who survived and people who didn't survive and how life and death are so interrelated and you can't really enjoy life without death. Like there's just so much in here, but it is so readable. The language is beautiful and I just, I just can't recommend it enough. I think it's gonna be one of my favorite books that I've read all year. The next thing that I read was The Many by Will Menmuir. I think that's how you pronounce his name, apologies and I downloaded this on my Kindle because it was long listed for the Man Booker Prize this year and when the long list came out I kind of had a flick down through the titles and thought oh I just want to read some of them and picked the ones that I thought sounded most interesting oh but I, I didn't like it this is about a man uh, from like the city who goes down to this coastal town. It's not specified where in the book, but in my head I imagined it to be a kind of Cornish seaside um, in the UK. It's a fishing village and he buys a house which used to belong to someone who sort of 10 years ago died. And then it's about the community either accepting him or trying to drive him away. It's kind of that sort of integrating with this community and the weird things that had happened 10 years ago and some strange goings on with the fish, which is happening now. And it was okay. I mean, the plot was kind of interesting. I wanted to find out what had been going on, but the writing itself, to me, I just found really quite dull and just sort of normal. It didn't surprise me in any way. And the techniques that he was using, I think, didn't really come off as well as perhaps he wanted to them to. There was a lot of use of flashback and things would be written in italics and you'd be, know that you were in the past and then you'd be back in the present again and then someone's dream would be described like, re like really lengthily and at the end of the book I thought there was going to be some kind of revelation and there kind of wasn't and it was just, it was just okay. But to be fair to the book, I guess I just had such high standards when something is long listed for a prize, especially for the Man Booker Prize, um, my expectation level is already set here. And so if something isn't amazing, I kind of think, well, why were you nominated? Which isn't really fair on the book. That's my expectations going into it. And it just didn't live up to anything for me. But then thankfully, the most recent two books that I've read, I absolutely adored. And I read a little bit of poetry. I read Grief is the Thing with Feathers by Max Porter and Crow by Ted Hughes. I read these very close together because grief is sort of a riff on Crow or, or this collection. And as someone who doesn't read loads of poetry, I asked my friends, what do you think I should do? Read Crow first and then Grief or Grief first then Crow? 
and they said probably grief so I did that and on reflection I think that was a very good decision because this isn't as straightforward poetry as this is and so it meant that I was kind of prepared a little bit more for Crow when I actually read it. So starting with grief is the thing with feathers this is about um, a husband and two boys and that the mother in the family dies suddenly and this is about them coping with that. You get little um, poems kind of either short couple of pages or prose poetry or stuff which is written in a bit more of a traditional poetic structure and you get something from dad, something from boys and then perhaps something from crow and crow is this strange creature who bursts through their door and says I will be here until you don't need me anymore and it's like this manifestation of their grief there to comfort them sometimes and there to torment them in other times and I don't really know if I can call it poetry or a novel or a short story collection it's kind of its own thing and I think if you try to define it you're going to struggle but if you just take it for what it is it's like this beautiful narrative of love and family and Crow is sort of this strange idea more than anything and his passages are quite bizarre and quite out of kilter with what the dad and boys narrative is. It's more of a base look at humanity and kind of dealing with with death in general so it kind of it all comes together really nicely I think at the end and actually I was reading this on the train and I finished the last poem on the train and I just had to put it down and I was like okay I need to stop reading now because I'm just gonna cry in public it's just it just moved me so much and I thought it was wonderful and then it was actually really good preparation for reading Crow by Ted Hughes this collection is more of a meditation on life I suppose and kind of dealing with life and Crow is a little bit more existential I guess in this book and is dealing with God and humanity and death and how death is a constant part of life but it's a much more grotesque base look at death but Crow is also a kind of literary religious symbolic figure and it kind of moulds all those things together and it's a look at kind of humanity and the meaning of life I guess so lots of big topics but the language I thought was really beautiful really visceral um, some of these poems did go over my head some of them I didn't really quite get the meaning of but I felt like that was fine I was really enjoying the imagery anyway and some of the poems in here I just completely loved so I thought this was a very interesting collection. I am very glad I read Grief before reading this but at the same time it is very different so it didn't feel like I was reading the same book twice which is what I was worried about going in. So all good things, all good things. I really enjoyed reading uh, Grief is the Thing with Feathers particularly and if you would like to read that too, oh then I have a competition for you. <laughs> Faber have given me five copies of Grief is the Thing with Feathers to give to you to celebrate the paperback edition coming out. So if you would like to be considered for the competition then just leave a comment um, on this video saying Saying, yes and to me I would like to win a copy of grief and I will run this for 48 hours from the upload of this video so Tuesday evening um, I will randomly select five winners and you'll get a copy of grief sent to you winners will be contacted uh, personally so I'm not going to make a big announcement or anything so thank you very much to Faber for that I hope you enjoyed this video let me know if you've read any of these books I would love to discuss them more in the comments if you're new you can subscribe for more videos by clicking the red subscribe button just underneath the left hand corner of this video and I we'll see you next time. Bye! So what I wanted to do today is talk about um, a little bit about myself, talk about um, my previous struggles with body image and then also give some tips and advice for the things that I do um, or things that I know make me feel better. So whenever I experience um, nasty voices in my head about my body they have normally arrived from...